Hi guys, welcome back to a quick video on the Armourer's Bench. I'm here with Ramsey from the Airborne Assault Museum and we are taking a quick look at a pretty interesting pit. So Ramsey, can you tell us a little bit about the provenance of this and what makes it so interesting? Yes, Matt. So the, the pit itself here um, was originally gifted to the Airborne Assault Museum in the 50s. It was gifted from the Dortworth uh, Museum, which is just due west of Oosterbeek right. in Arnhem. And the, oh, sorry, near, near Arnhem. And this one, we believe, came actually out of a drop container that was dropped at Arnhem. Not used, but it was found very, very shortly after the battle. Right, that's really interesting. So it was, it was dropped and then probably the case wasn't found, perhaps? It was... Probably in the drop container. Well, it would have been in the drop container. Yes. Yeah. So the drop container would have been opened and obviously found, and then whoever found the drop container yeah. brought it to the yeah. Doctor's Museum, and the Doctor's Museum presented it to the Airborne Sort Museum. In the uh, it's, in it's in great shape. It is. So it is. It's. It's. We'll we'll have some uh, close-ups of this in a moment. But I just thought it was really interesting, and I wanted to show everyone something that we can actually trace back to the to the uh, arm. The museum believes the pit has much of its original paintwork, and in general the weapon is in excellent shape. Sadly, the weapon has been deactivated, so we couldn't open up the action or cock the weapon. It seems to have been welded at the front and rear of the body to prevent the spigot from moving. It also appears to have its original chain for the spigot guide tube cork stopper. It was on display last weekend at the Airborne Assault Museum's tent at the We Have Ways History Festival. The Piet's monopod can also be raised and lowered to elevate the weapon up to 40 degrees for indirect firing. The Piet has the earlier rear sight with two apertures for 70 and 100 yards, so it predates the later design which moved to three with a maximum range of 110 yards. The weapon also appears to have its original white indirect fire aiming line along the top of its body, and almost pristine webbing, though the butt's cover is frayed, which isn't uncommon. Yeah, it's really, really something, isn't it? original paintwork, yeah. which is real key for this one. Yeah. Got the original um, indirect fire aiming line. Um, it's a two-position two sight, but as I said, we'll have some close-ups. I just wanted to show everyone this really interesting piece from the Airborne Assault Museum. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. You can also support us via Patreon, and uh, please do share the videos with friends. Thanks, guys.